morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whichever time zone you are in right now. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Nell. And if you're brand new to this channel, hit that subscribe button because there's some great stuff coming up this year. I have a lot, a lot of projects and a lot of visits to do to orchid fairs and plant fairs that you may not want to miss. Like today's episode. Today's episode is always my favorite, What's in Bloom. And I gotta tell you, this year is gonna be pretty busy because there's so many spikes and I've upped my game as far as my feeding cycle and and my um, my discipline as far as continuing every week, doing what I'm supposed to do, feeding. Uh, I've been doing fungicide to make sure that all this rainy weather doesn't affect the leaves of my plants. These past two weeks has been crazy windy in Miami. I lived in Chicago and I gotta tell you, this was like being in Chicago in full windy season. It, you'll see when I start showing you things, look at the background. There's so many leaves in my yard. It's, there's like carpet areas of leaves and they literally just finished doing the, the, the yard about a week ago. And literally the next day, boom, I'll actually, you know what? I'll put a panoramic image that I took right after they finished. So you guys can see how beautiful it looks right when they're done. But then not even 24 hours later, boom, I'm showered by leaves. <laughs> But anyway, I'm not going to take too much time because today's going to be a pretty extended episode because there is so much to show you guys. But according to you guys, you don't mind the length. You actually enjoy when I go like over 30 and 40 minutes. That's surprising to me. I don't know if I would watch me for 40 minutes, but thank you guys for doing that. That's awesome. Before I forget, later on in the show, before I close, I had promised you guys that I would start showing some of the... Um, um, orchids that my viewers grow themselves and I have two viewers I want to showcase today I want to showcase Oscar and Frank now Frank I know I met Frank uh, right in the beginning when I started uh, recording and he took a liking to my channel and he actually gifted me a beautiful beautiful species which is Epidendrum ciliara ciliare ciliara I always get that name wrong <laughs> but anyways I will show you guys how big or actually I'll show Frank how big the plant got because I don't think you guys might even remember when I got it but it's in one of my episodes in the beginning when he gifted it to me and I am so excited because it's given me so many new shoots um, new growth so I'm hoping that I get a lot of shoots um, uh, look like but if you guys see this orchid in its natural beauty it's like a cascade it's like a, a bundle of flowers <laughs> so no more talking let's go look at some flowers <laughs> Okay guys, let's start in the greenhouse, even though there's other areas I would like to show you, but we're gonna start in the greenhouse and I usually forget this. So I'm gonna start here with my Dendrobium nobili. And this is a, what they call the semi-alba. I believe it's semi-alba. I don't have a tag for it. I got this at a local seller. She has a, she sells straight from her home and I found her on offer up. Well, I didn't find her, Laz found her and her place is awesome she has some amazing things if i can get her information i will put it down here and i would highly suggest you guys if you live in miami take a visit because she has beautiful beautiful stuff and this is what i like about this this is a variegated dendrobium see the leaves how cool they are unfortunately you know like all nobles they lose their leaves and then the flower comes out and as you can see she is like busting out she's gonna really be a nice showcase when she's fully open and she's such a like beast look at this she's giving me <laughs> new cakeys so now i'm gonna have new cakeys which i'm gonna put right back in there i wanted to get really you know some people just divide them and and sell them and but honestly i i don't know i just really like them now i have been thinking I want to do something fun for my channel and for my viewers and i was thinking about doing sort of like a contest i've never shipped any plants but i would like to maybe like when i have cakeys like this from something so unique i would like to like just cut it and share it with you guys and then i'll but i just have to think of what kind of raffle and how do i do it and i got to talk to blanca about that she's the one that's an expert she's done it before now the dendrobium anusmum this was a hitchhiker this <laughs> this anusmum came it was really tiny it had like maybe this when i first got it and the plant that it came in, it was a Brasavala hybrid that is not, it's never done well. I mean, it's over there hanging on a cone. I don't know if you can see it. 
But anyway, I took her out and she ends up being the one that does amazing. And the smell of this flower is like sugary grape candy. That is my best definition. And it's exactly like that. Of, well, for my nose, it smells just like sugar candy. I mean, the color itself represents how it smells. Very, very grapey. But it's a beautiful flower. It's fragrant day and night. At least this one here is. I can smell her at any time and she always has a fragrance. Now, right now, right now is when she starts getting really potent because it's starting to hit uh, after morning, around 9, 9.30, she starts like pushing out her fragrance. All right, now here is the Chili Rihanna that I have shown you guys that was in bud and it was starting to open. Look at this spectacular show of flowers. I mean, I'm really going to take my time here because you guys were very impressed by this last time I showed it. And I myself am very impressed. When I first got this Chili Rihanna, it was three years ago. It was at the Valentine Orchid Show in Fort Lauderdale right before the pandemic. It was in 2019. It's crazy because we can remember dates due to the pandemic. <laughs> it's like BC and AC. Well, before COVID, after COVID, <laughs> we're still going to use it. <laughs> So, um, I bought this on a fly. I had no idea how to grow this plant. They were telling me, oh, this is a, a, a um, Phalaenopsis species and it's one that collectors really uh, want. You know, anybody who's a, a, a true, you know, hardcore collector of orchids usually has this in their collection. And the leaves, the leaves get really long and full. So when I first got it, this is all it had. It had like two little leaves right here. And the first year it gave me one spike and the spike was maybe about that much. <laughs> it was a third of this. And then it started growing. Let me see if I can show you some new growth. Let me see, yeah, see like this is a new growth. While it was doing that, it didn't spike. So I didn't have a spike last year, the year before last I did, but I didn't have one last year. And then this year it just gave me this beautiful cascade I love it and it smells delicious it smells like between floral and baby powder it's just delicious now this is the unknown <laughs> Philanopsis it's I believe it's a species somebody told me it was a species um, some people tell me is a Yero Yeroglipica Others tell me, no, it's not, that it's a tetrapsis. Now, I am gonna, I am gonna say, if I have to pick one of those two, I would pick tetrapsis, only because of the multiple spikes that it gives, just like the embonensis. And the tetrapsis, they come in many different colors. Wait, hold on. Oh, come on, focus, you were doing so well. There we go. And you guys see, it's very cute. The inside, it has these little patterns. Now it's really early in the morning and I just had a big old cup of coffee. <laughs> so if I'm a little shaky, now you guys know why. <laughs> so anyways, I have christened this a Tetrapsis for now until proven not. <laughs> but I love it. It has no fragrance. Let me see. Let me check. No, it has no fragrance at all. But it's a beautiful flower nonetheless. And of course, I put it on this wood piece that comes from the orchid supply store, which is also one of my spa, my only sponsor. <laughs> one of my many sponsors, <laughs> uh, orchid supply store, who they've been so generous and they've been so kind, Ken over at the orchid supply store. He's just such a cool guy. And, and he has sent a lot of these wood pieces for me to try out and to promote and to give him some feedback. And honestly, I gotta tell you, everything I have put on these wood slabs is just, Hold on, let me see if I can pull back. Yeah, it's just thriving. Now, this a while ago, this was almost up to here in this color. I started with my feedings. I started adding Epsom salt. And look, it's, it's turning dark green again. It's amazing how good Epsom salt works. Now, you have to do it continuously, at least when you have them hanging like this. Because I put very little. I don't want to put so much salt that it's going to, you know, cause any root... Uh, tip burns or root burns so I put a quarter uh, of uh, or half of half a teaspoon if that makes any sense 
like whatever my uh, half teaspoon is, I only fill it to half of that. So it's very little what I put, but I do it every single Monday and it's been helping. Now this one got tagged. There we go. Got tagged wrong. It's tagged under Shinor. Hold on, let me see. Shinorka's fragrance or fragrance. But that's not it. That's the little mini Shinorkis is a little mini, mini orchid that I had. So somehow <laughs> that got tagged differently. And I don't know where the tag to this is. And honestly, I can't remember the name right now. I'll look for it and I'll put it on the bottom. But these are very cool. Um, this orchid was not doing too well for me at one point. Uh, it started losing. It started dying off. See, uh, it's kind of dying off but it was really full and it would give me several spikes. Now that I started feeding again and I realized it loves tons of water. I mean, a lot, because the roots are so fine. They're like, I call these hair roots and they're just so fine that they don't hold that much water. So I noticed that the more water you give it, the more it responds to it. But this year it gave me a beautiful spike with some flowers. Now I can't remember if this is fragrant, let me see. I do smell something, but maybe I'm smelling. Oh no, you know what I'm smelling? <laughs> Next door neighbor, <laughs> the Brasabola. But yeah, this one, this one is a beauty and I'm glad that I'm bringing it back because I thought I was going to lose her. My God, the hot, the highlight of this phone today, it's just not, it's not working properly. The focus is not working properly. This is a Brasabola. This is also a, a species. Oh, by the way, this is a species. Um, I just put this again on another piece of wood from the orchid supply store and it really looks gorgeous here. As a matter of fact, once I put it here, it ended up giving me this flower and uh, this flower, which already fell out. But I love Brasavolas. They just have such a beautiful fragrance. Brasavolas, um, let me see, Brasavola, Queen of the Night. Uh, there's several flowers that kind of have the same fragrance, Sansevera. Um, and it's funny because they're, they're not even from the same family of plants, but they, their, fla their flowers tend to smell very, very similar. It's fresh, it's clean. The Brasavolas tend to be like, it's potent. Like you can smell it from just walking by. Now down below, we have Zygonesia. I think that's what they call this. It's a, it's a mix. And this is here, I'll show you the tag. I've got to do this so this way I don't have to do a lot of writing at the end. It's a snowbird. It's a clone. And I got this from Lady Vanda. I have featured it before. I got it in the last show that I went. And I got to tell you, I love zygopetalums and I love this one. I call it the tie-dye zygo. Because, well, it's not zygopetalum, it's zygonesia. Um, because it's, it has these patterns that just kind of looks like you purposely tie-dyed it. And I love the fact that it has these Easter colors. Because usually when you see zygos, they, they're very bright and saturated in tone. But this one is very soft, very Eastery, very spring. Um, I just love it. But now my favorite zygo, and this is a zygopetalum, it's this one. This zygopetalum I got about three years ago, three or four years ago at the Tamiami Orchid Show. I do not remember. You guys usually want to know where I buy it. I, you know, sometimes I don't remember because I bought them so long ago. And back then I wasn't doing my channel. So I wasn't really keeping any records of where I bought it. I would just, oh, pretty flower, buy it, take it home. I didn't even look where I bought it. So I don't remember where I bought this. I wish I did because it's, a, it's my favorite Zygopetalum and I would love to check their their collections out. I'm sure they have better stuff. But look at the, look at the, look at the, the the pattern on these flowers, how beautiful. And the freckles that go from that deep purple into freckles all on that white base is just really, really pretty. And this is here, let me show you, Debbie DeMello. I always call it Halle Berry. I don't know why, maybe I saw that in a flower, but if they don't have that in a flower, they should name that into a flower. It's a Debbie DeMello Honolulu Baby. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something that I just learned. By the way, when you see these spots, for you newbies that are on my channel, 
and you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, well, I'm not that impressed. Look at your leaves, they're all messed up. Well, they're not. I wanna show you something. Do you see when you, when you rub it and you clean it? That's, my leaves are extremely shiny, extremely healthy. The only problem is I live in an agricultural area where the water is very high in calcium. So when you, and I try not to water these leaves, you know, cause zygopetalums, they don't like to be watered at all on top of the leaves. If you have a zygo, please only water it at the base. Try not to wet the top. And if it sprinkles a little, that's fine. Just don't pour, you know, the water in the leaves because they do get what's called spot fungus and they'll start cracking and breaking and they don't do so. They don't look so good and they don't do so good. So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys because I know some of you have asked, have a, have had asked me why the white spots and the white spots is basically my fungicide, which I do spray. When I feed, I only feed in here. I don't spray food on the leaves. I know that um, some people do like to do it. There's certain plants that do inhale their nutrition through their leaves, like the trumpet plant. I know that for a fact but i don't know that about most orchids so what i do is i try not to wet the leaves too much to avoid any fungus uh buildup or any encouragement of fungus but i want to show you see just by rubbing it off look how clean that leaf looks i'll put it up close so you can see so now you guys can see that even though you see it spotty the leaves are very healthy now the agrecum crestwood is no longer in bloom, but boy, is this puppy healthy. I am so happy. These, these plants are prone to high fungus, especially during the rainy season, in the cold season. And I started spraying it. I didn't realize back here, see, it started getting fungus. This, by the way, guys, there's no fungus on this. I know you guys say, hey, you touched it. Now you're touching other. I have been hitting this with fungus for about two months now. And I got to tell you, there none of these plants have fungus or any kind of disease. Besides the fact that I do it every Monday, even if I were to transfer something, it's not going to be strong enough to develop. Because by the time it starts developing, I'm already spraying with fungicide. So I do get it that when you touch one plant, you can transfer to the other. But these are my plants. I know how I keep them, so I know that it's safe that if even if I did transfer something in a couple of days, it's going to get sprayed and it's been working great for me. Now, this little little one right here, which I am obsessed with, is the famous Rene Marquis. It's an Epicatlea, which are one of my favorite. I love Epicatleas because they're just so delicate and so sophisticated. And when you photograph these, by the way, I'm doing um, night photography of all my hold on. Let me see if it captures it there. Night photography of all my orchids. And I simply do it with my phone and one of those uh, head gears that have the LED lights. And I've been doing some beautiful photography, just um, taking pictures of the flower. Now this one surprised me today, it just opened. So now I have two. I went from no blooms, cause this one never bloomed for me, from no blooms to two beautiful blooms. Now these don't have fragrance, at least mine doesn't. I haven't smelled anything on it. But I gotta tell you, if you don't have a Rene Marquis, and here I'll show you what the tag again, this way, void typing in my editing. It's an Ep Epicale Rene Marquis Taylor, or Tyler, I'm sorry, Tyler. And I got this years ago with Laz, we both got one at Soroa Orchids. And it was just this one, <laughs> one stick. And I was, and I think I paid like 30. Ooh, sorry about that. I almost dropped my phone. <laughs> All right. We're done with the Rene Marquis. And we're going to move on to this beautiful cranberry and yellow. That as some of you guys know, it's one of my favorite combination. If not my favorite combination of tone. Cranberry and yellow is just such a beautiful, beautiful color together. It's um, very regal, you know, it gives me this feeling of regal. Um, I do see color in masculine and feminine. I do find these colors to be extremely masculine as I find this to be extremely feminine. <laughs> so I like that contrast of these two. That's why I keep them here together. 
so that you guys know how my brain works. <laughs> there's, there's a, um, there's a system to my madness. <laughs> but anyways, this one I bought from Tang at Springwater, one of my favorite, favorite vendors. Love Tang. He's such a great guy. Such such amazing wisdom. I mean, he's helped me with some things that I, I was a I was a little skept, skeptic before, you know, with my uh, catacetums, and I was like, hmm, I don't know if that's going to work. But I'm going to show you later how well his advice worked. Now, this is an Oncidium Wildcat Golden Red Star. I'm sorry it's not focusing, but I can see that it's that you can read it. it's legible. There we go. All right, and this one seems to be very generous and the flowers lost, last a really, really long time. I've had this open now for about a month and a half, maybe. And the flowers are very fresh. I don't see any sign of withering away or anything like that. So I think we have this for a little longer. Now I wanna share this for a second, it has no blooms, but this is one of the custom made um, mounts over at the Orchid Supply Store. Uh, if you guys are interested in this, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, Ken, oh, the owner of the place, decided to do a line called the Nature Nell Mounts, and they're all custom made. They're, um, they're, all of them are different. Not one is, is looks the same. And I have not told him how to do anything. He's been doing this himself, and you know, his ideas and my plants um, design working on this, it's been working great. Like almost like if we had even planned it. Now I had put, I'm doing a, a Phalaenopsis mount here and this one for some reason was dying, but you know what? It's coming back and everything looks healthy. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I, I'm just showing you guys cause I'm, I'm gonna bring this all right back to health. This bottom one is doing great. This is the Amboinensis, which by the way has one bloom. Tejas Giant smells delicious. And I got this at Crawl Smith. So this one's doing wonderful, right? And it's giving me new growth, new shoots. So I know that that one's happy there, but those two up there, I'm still working. The one on the very top here, that one's coming back really well. Cause I didn't even think that was gonna come back. And the flowers are gorgeous. This is a Violacea and this is a Dragon Tree Eagle, um, George Cross with Bellina. So hopefully they'll come back. I think they are, all right. You guys ready to enter the room? We haven't even entered the greenhouse and look how many flowers we've covered. I'm telling you, this is a long one. All right, here we have a Ban Yang Ben Fragrance, uh, Ben Fantasy. And I bought this one from him a while back. I was with Laz and he goes, oh, I got some stuff in the back that we have been testing. And I, I, don't, I haven't put it up front because we don't know if we're gonna sell them yet or not, but I want you to see it. If you like it, you can take them. And I took this massive piece. It was so big, I said, I want it. I cut this one, I cut, it was, it was part of another one. I forgot what it was. But anyways, I ended up cutting this from here and bringing it down because it was too tall. But it gave me two beautiful spikes this year. And look at the flower, how beautiful it is. It has no fragrance, but my God, is this flower gorgeous. This has such pretty tones. It's very vintage looking. And the fact that it's so generous in its blooms, I'm a fan. And right next to it, I'm going a little quicker because there's still a lot to show. It's the golden doubloon. Talk about smelling delicious and sweet. <laughs> this Vanda was one of the very first Vandas that I fell in love with as far as um, from Banyongs. Uh, I was watching Blanca's uh, Orchid Garden, which back then we used to call uh, the Orchid Diva. And it was, I think, one of the first episodes, of, not the first, but first year. And her kids gave her this for, I think it was Mother's Day or her birthday. And I was like, oh my God, that's such a great looking Vanda. I have to check it out. So I went and I bought one. And this one too, is, it's a giant. I had to cut this one in, literally in half. Look at the other half here. So I had to cut it and bring it down because it was just too tall. And as soon as I cut it, it gave me two spikes and it bloomed. Now this one is on the way out. It was just as full as this one. It had a bunch, but they're starting to already die off. 
And then this one just opened. Come here, beauty. This one is called, and I bought this. I can't believe I, sometimes I, I surprise myself. I actually remember <laughs> where I bought them. I bought this at the Santani, Sant Santani Nursery that I just did an episode on. I bought this a couple of years ago and it is from Banyong's and it's a Vanda Sky, no, Vanda Sky Blue. And it had the tag here, but it's worn out. See, you can't even see the writing. So I remember it was uh, Vanda Sky Blue because this is the that purple that it's so purple that it, it ends up being actually like a hue of blue on it. You don't get to appreciate it on film as much as when you're in person because there's certain colors that don't register. But this is a beautiful, beautiful Vanda no fragrance but you know what i really don't care when they when they're this big i mean look how pretty this is yeah has a beautiful pattern and just the color itself is so again i hate to use this word but it is it's very regal all right let's leave the regalness and go next door to the hawaiian punch <laughs> i call it the hawaiian punch orchid because it smells let me see it smells just like oh my god you know it smells either like hawaiian punch or fruit loops <laughs> it reminds me of either one of those two but anyways this is the askasenda hey you already had your spot your spotlight leave leave my tavavat alone now this is my askasenda tavavat and this is one that i bought also from ben young and i fell in love with it and when he told me oh yeah it smells like fruit punch I was like, oh, no way. And when I smelled it, I was like, I need one in my life. So he went to the back. He goes, you know, I don't have anything spiking or in bloom. I was like, I don't care. I'll take what you have. So I took this one. And I mean, it. It's this is like fifth time that it blooms for me or six. Blooms a lot. But it's a beautiful red with that little yellow hint in the middle. Of, again, the, the cranberry and yellow happening so super super stoked about this one this one's about to happen and guess what guys they're starting to go <laughs> my vandopsis parisii for those of you that have been following me and know of this vanda being one of the hardest vandas to get to bloom i actually got it to bloom and i had no idea that the blooms last so many weeks this is like fifth week already and now is when it's starting to kind of drop some of the the, lead, the flowers. But then, oh, hold on, I'm trying not to crash against a chair. If you look here, and let me see, there's one spike there. There's one there. There's another one about to come out there. And it surprised me because it's like, you know how most Vandas, they just keep spiking from the top and up, they keep going up. This one doesn't, this one just, it's random you know, and lots. So what I do is I keep a little spray bottle with uh, fertilizer uh, at full potency, uh, half, a half a tablespoon to a gallon. And so I, I spray it every three to four days at the roots because it needs a lot of energy to push those spikes out. They're very thick flower, very waxy and thick, and they don't have fragrance, but you know what, the other day, the other day I smelled it and I smelled something. I, I, maybe it was some neighboring flower, but I smell something. But anyways, they need a lot of food. Every three to four days I feed it, and that's the only way you're gonna get that to happen. Cause I, I did lose, look. It blasted that one, and it blasted that one, because I didn't feed it. It'll start pushing it out, but then it doesn't have the energy to push the rest, so it just dies. All right, up above, up in the clouds, we have, sorry, we have, Hold on, I'm trying to do this with my left hand. My right hand's getting tired. <laughs> this is the Violeta, Violet, Violeta, <laughs> Vanda Violeta Banyang. I got this at Banyang. And this is the one that if you guys follow, which I'm sure you do, Blanca's Orchid Garden, um, you will see <clears throat> that she has all of them. <laughs> so if you want any of these, you gotta buy them from Blanca from this point forward. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but she has a lot of them but you know what they're just so beautiful i do not blame her i want more of these they're just constantly blooming they smell delicious 
I mean, that's a big plus right there. And then the color is just spectacular. I mean, it's a really, really, really pretty color. It has that, that silver lining around the petals. It's just so pretty. I never get tired of, of looking at these flowers. There's Big Mama there, my queen of the night that you guys saw from my last haul. I'm just still amazed at that. Actually, I look at every time I look at it, I'm like, did I really get this for $25? <laughs> Does she really know what she's selling? <laughs> my epi um, encyclias. My encyclias are all spiking. Cordigera. I think that's the way somebody told me that you say Cordigera. Because the thing is, I speak Spanish. So when I saw saw it, I thought it was Cordigera. <laughs> but it's not Cordigera. It's Cordigera, I think. Behind me, the nun caps orchid. The shower of flower. Look how beautiful that is. This is such a, an intensely beautiful orchid. And I love them because they're they're actually ground orchids. They grow in soil. And I can show you. Now these leaves, I've noticed this every year it does this. When it shoots so many flowers, it gets a little yellow like this. But then all those leaves that you see like that, they bounce back and they become really green. So it's done it twice. I don't even worry anymore. I don't know why it does it. I've given it Epsom salt thinking that it needs green, but no, it doesn't do it's just and the and the leaf itself is healthy. It's 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 just weird <laughs> so if you guys know what that may be if you think that there's something i can feed it that it'll bring back that besides epsom salt let me know because I, I i like to try it i'm always experimenting with my orchids you know people tell me how do you get your orchids to bloom i'm like listen i just experiment with them i know it's horrible to say that but how am i going to learn if i don't experiment and i usually try to take orchids that you know haven't been blooming or orchids that you know are not like like i would not take my vendopsis and start experimenting with it you know just like that because it's a very unique number one it was a beautiful gift from a viewer my teresita which i love love i, I gotta tell you, i love her she's so awesome she's such an awesome soul and she's so good in what she does you know she's takes care of animals i think at the dog rescue center and all. i mean she's just an amazing person but anyway these flowers drive me crazy because as soon as i walk into this uh green <laughs> to the green room i can smell them it smells oh my god it smells like a, a clean 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 powdery flowery fragrance i i there's no specific fragrance that i can think of but it's just very clean and strong and all over the place and again this is called the nun caps orchid and there's other other um orchids that are similar to it this one is the oktoberfest and it's starting to open its first flower very similar to the nun's cap orchid uh, just the color is slightly different and the flowers do when they completely open they open this way not this way here and i got this at aqua genera oh hold on no i didn't get this at aqua genera there's a the actual name i got this at orchids lees and things now i remember but they uh, aqua genera does have them now here, way up there, is my Vanda Maria. Marie. <laughs> I can never get this name straight, but here, let me. Uh, that's how you write it. And again, what do we see here? Cranberry and yellow. <laughs> and it's an adorable, it's a species and it, it has no fragrance, but man, has she already bloomed, she's already bloomed twice for me. And I got her at the Fairchild, um, not Fairchild, Tamiami show. Uh, was it last year? No, this year? I can't remember. Well, Tamiami show last year, I think. <laughs> oh my God, time is going so fast. Now here, this is from Equagenera. It's a Bubophyllum abreviatum. And look at that, guys. Hold on, let me see, because, oh my God, me and coffee. I just can't, hold on, hold on. There we go, much better. So anyways, I got this at Equagenera, and I just love the fact that they're so tiny, 
I mean, look at that. That is one tiny flower. <laughs> and the little things in the center, I think they move. They, somebody had told me that they move, but I really don't like to tamper with it. It's such a delicate little bubble film. And, you know, I haven't, I think I smelled it once and it smelled atrocious. So hold on, I'm gonna do it for you guys. Oh my God, yes, I remember what it smells like. <laughs> <laughs> I will not say it on this channel, but it smells just like it. And I know, I know that it smells like that because several people that smell it tell me, oh my God, that smells like, but I'm not going to say it. It's just too nasty to talk about on this channel. Just take my word for it. It stinks. <laughs> but the actual flower is gorgeous. And look at what you're seeing there. What are we seeing there? Cranberry specks and yellow, little yellow tip. I'm telling you, there's something about cranberry and yellow that I gravitate to that I had no idea until I started noticing it in my green room. All right. Boy, there's still more to show. <laughs> Ooh, I hope you guys enjoy a long episode because there's still more to show. Here is the Crawl Smith Mimi Palmer cross with Tessalata. And this, talk about fragrance. I mean, any Tessalata Vanda that you get is gonna have intense fragrance. Mimi Palmer is just very intense, which I think somebody told me Mimi Palmer already has Tessalata. So I guess they're going, they're re-hybridizing it with its original hybrid, I don't know. Kind of weird, but anyways, the reason I fell in love with this, not just because of the amazing fragrance, but look how many cakeys this Vanda has. And it's a compact Vanda. And I got this at Crawl Smith last time I visited them. And it's one of my favorites that I got from them. I really, really enjoyed this little Vanda. And there's a second time it blooms for me. Now, right next to it, it's the one that um, Sierra, Sierra Madre gifted me, the last show that I went to. And this one is an unregistered uh, Vanda. But again, what do we see? Cranberry and yellow. <laughs> which is weird it was cranberry and yellow it's turning like a purplish now as it's aging and this one is unregistered so they just name him like this burgundy spotty now i gave it a name i liked to, well i gave it a name that i can't even remember now <laughs> it was called cranberry i gave it cranberry sunset only because it reminded me like of a sunset and it has a cranberry colors so that's what i call it now my vanda cranberry sunset <laughs> If you guys think that's a cool name, let me know. If you think it's ridiculous, let me know too. Because <laughs> that was me just saying, you know, I got to give you a name, you know. Now, I, I know there's a viewer that told me that her uh, unregistered or untagged Vandas, she gives them people names like Bob, Tina. I think that's so cool. I think that's such a great idea. But I, I just want to name it something kind of like closer to what people would name an orchid. So I thought of Cranberry Sunset, Vanda Cranberry Sunset. All right. For the finale in the green room, I left it for last. I want to show you guys this spectacular little corner. I gave it, you know how I like to name everything. So I want to call it call that, uh, confetti corner. Ready? Here we go. Look at all my Oncidiums and my Tulumnias. I decided to put them all in one section. But look at this, Lazaro christened this the popcorn uh, oncidium because it actually looks like buttered popcorn. <laughs> he says, doesn't it look like buttered popcorn? I go, you know what, you're right. <laughs> so this, as you guys, some of you guys may know, this is two that I placed in this uh, symbol that I got from the orchid den. And I put two of them last year, early, uh, late last year. And one of them was a gift from Sierra Madre so I have my two gifts from Sierra Madre side by side. And the other one I got from Lee's Orchids. Uh, orchids things from, uh, oh my God, I'm running. Today is like between the coffee, uh, the fact that I'm, I have to go to work. I'm doing this in the morning, by the way. <laughs> Blanca told me, just do them in the morning before you go to work. I go, but I feel like I'm rushed. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I sound rushed. Um, so anyways, these two I put in the thimble and the, literally like within two months, it shot all these spikes. Like it's really, really happy there. And if you guys want to know what the medium is, it's nothing but lava rock. 
So Oncidiums, if you guys have Oncidiums and you don't, you're not having a lot of luck with them, either hang them on a mount or put them in lava rock. They don't like to sit in water. They hate it. They get fungus really quick. This I got on my last um, haul, which is the sweet sugar or sugar sweet or some Oncidium sweet sugar. I think that's what it's called. Um, Cause it doesn't have a tag, but I did, uh, I did Google it and that's what it's called. And I love it cause it's so yellow. <laughs> it's like a, a true like crayon mustardy yellow. Very, very pretty flower. No fragrance either, but, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. The popcorn plant, the orchid, <laughs> too long of a name. Gonsidumia oncidium camp campingian, white snow with Tulumnia oncidium Catherine Wilson uh, with Anessa oncidium goldiana. So it has several, several, uh, has several mixes in this hybrid. And it's pretty cool that they mix a Tulumnia and an oncidium. And again, for those of you that don't know, this is a Tulumnia. Hey, you already got your spot. What is wrong with these orchids today? They all want to hog up the camera. Hello? You already got covered. Enough. Jesus. All right, back to you, Tulumnias. You always get, like, bumped when I showcase you guys by another orchid. And we're not having that today. You guys are too beautiful. <laughs> so this is what they call the Tulumnia bloody bird. This is the, I think they call this a red face and rainbow. Hold on, let me see. I have them all here, back here. <laughs> this is how I keep my super bright is the yellow. The rainbow, Catherine Wilson and Vanessa Siku is the, the pink one. So if you guys like the pink one, uh, that's the pink one. The top, the bloody bird that I told you guys or yeah, the firm bloody bird. There you go, that's your right, firm bloody bird. And the yellow one is called the super bright. Now this one hasn't opened yet. There's another one down here. I can't remember what it is, but I had done a mounting video on how to mount. I'm telling you, they wanna be in the frame. I'm gonna have to put you in the corner. Starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> Anyways, they are my kids. <laughs> this is another one. I got this one from, I, I get all of these from Tang, by the way, from Springwater. He has a great collection of Tulumnia. They're always very healthy. And then this one is a pretty rare hybrid. Tang told me that this one is not easy to find. And he only had one and it, it was a large, he sold this for $50. This was a little pricey, but it gave me two spikes. You know, when I have a, an orchid that I buy, and I think it's a little pricey. And then several weeks later, I get spikes. That right there was worth every penny. So I am really, 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 really into this corner right now. My little Oncidium Tulumnia corner. Or should I say confetti corner? All right. <sighs> Boy, this is a very long video. <laughs> You know what? I think I'm going to cut it here, guys. I was going to show you guys real quick. Well, you know, I'll show you. I ordered this online. It's a cutting from, I think they're called Epiphilums, uh, the Queen of the Nights. Um, and it came with a little tiny, tiny little bud. So over at the Orchid Supply Store, I got these soils. This is Professional Gold Blend, Screen Fine Soil Prep, and Omri Organic Screen Compost. Now, this dirt, I mix them. I actually had mixed them to do my bonsais and I got amazing results. It's a very, very rich soil that has a lot of nutrients. It's composted. It has a lot of um, mulch bark and they use only the top, top quality. And I got to tell you, this is only a week old. I put this in here and look at the flower. It's actually going to bud. It's going to shoot this flower. And it just looks really, really, really happy. Like from when I got it in the mail, in the box, till now, it's like the green is, is popping. So I got to tell you, this soil, Ken, you were asking me my, my, my um, opinion on this. Well, I'm finally using it. And I got to tell you, I don't think I want to use anything else for, especially for my specialty plants, because this is really, really clean stuff. And already on my um, bonsai bougainvillea, 
it's night and day. I, I can't believe how beautiful it looks. And then as I was telling you, I've been feeding my Hoyas a lot, which people say, oh, don't feed them, don't water them. Well, guess what? I went against the grain and guess what they're doing? They are blooming like crazy for me. Look at this. I've never had so many blooms on my Hoyas. Here's a here's a the Retusa. I think this one's called a Compacta, Hoya Compacta. And then this is a Retusa. And it's also, I've showed this before, it's also giving lots of little blooms and still giving more that are opening. And then next to it, it's another one <laughs> that gave me three blooms for the first time this year. And this is also from Soroa, Hoya Mendorensis Gold. And I'm just, is, does this have fragrance? No, no fragrance. Only the Carnosa. And then back here is my Rasha Sinii that it's finally, um, finally, as if I was waiting for it to bloom. It surprised me with these blooms. Isn't that beautiful? This is the second string of blooms that I get. And it was a huge surprise. It smells almost like a, a jasmine-y type of fragrance. And I got this Solangeny from Smiley about three, four years ago. And I, I think I paid 120. They are they are pretty pricey. And it was only like four little things. Look how big this oh, let me see if I can. Look how big she's gotten. I'm super, super happy that she's gotten healthy because there was a time there that I thought I was going to lose her. But then I started feeding and I brought her in here and it seems to be the magic spot. All right, guys, I got to stop this. It's just too much. I can't even show you the flowers on my palm trees or around the hedges. It's just going to be too much. Let me turn this around. All right, guys, I decided to just come over here before I close the channel. I might as well just make this a one hour show. <laughs> I'm only like eight minutes away from it. So um, I wanted to show you the Philanopsis that I have on my trees. They hardly ever get any um, spotlighting on my channel. And I think it's so unfair because I got to tell you, they're always blooming and they're so pretty and their colors are so rich. This one back here is gorgeous. It's a soft pink. It reminds me of the Shiliriana, but just larger. See, it even has... Uh, I wonder if they took the Shili Rihanna and, you know, just crossed it with this one. And then this one back here, Laz gave me on my birthday years ago. When I first, when we, I think it's when we first finished remodeling the house. So it must've been like five years ago. And it hasn't stopped blooming ever since. That was the very first orchid I put on a tree and it attached well and it's, it likes it here. And here, I got to tell you guys, the wind, the wind knocked down a lot of palm leaves. See, these are my arecas and I cut them all underneath. I do all the cutting myself to create a whole effect of bamboo. Um, but what happens is when there's a lot of wind, the dry ones start slipping down and they hit the the shoot sometimes and they break them so this had another shoot back here that was over it was it was really gorgeous it was like 10 or 15 it was a lot and unfortunately it broke it and then I cleaned this whole area out from the bottom here it was it had already grown up to here so I cleaned it all out and unfortunately from cleaning I also knocked some flowers out you know, it happens and then, oh, look who's here, hiding behind the tree. Simba! Simba! Say hi, buddy! Yeah! I know I haven't seen you all day. Probably hunting lizards. So, here's another Philanopsis. I got this at, at BJ's. <laughs> I remember I used to buy them and put them in my salon. And once it would stop blooming, I would just put them out here in the trees. And it's so pretty. I mean, they're, they're really healthy. I have a maxillaria down there. Here's one of the white ones that Lewis loves so much. All right, let me take you 
to Lewis's section because a couple of you really, really, really like the big white giant orchid. I didn't think a lot of people were going to make comments about it, but a lot of you really liked it and and wanted to see more. So I have like four more in my terrace that we're going to put. But look, the ones that we planted are doing great. Unfortunately, like you see how this is going? This, this um, a palm fronds hit it and it broke it in this one too. I mean, it happens. We've, we've had so much wind, guys. You, you have no idea the wind that, that Miami has had and the, for the past two weeks, nonstop straight, like day and night, crazy. So I'm, I'm happy that I still have flowers. You know, I thought this for sure, they were gonna knock them all out. This one spiked recently. See how sad. Well, at least these are still doing good. And the plants themselves, which I use the netting from our fruits and vegetables, are holding really well. I really, really am happy the way this is turning out. We got four minutes left. I'm really going to do a one hour show. <laughs> I figured what the hey, you know. Welcome to my terrace, guys. It's a little messy because we've been trying to adjust things around, but these are my Two of my aquariums. I have a cichlid frontosa who's always afraid of me. Here are more cichlids, and believe it or not, I mix them with like tetras and everything, and they all they all do well. Everybody's one big happy family, but except him, he attacks everyone, so he has to be alone. So I want to show you here. These are the other four that I bought at the nursery which you guys saw in the hall, blooming beautiful. These are my African violets that I put in here. I just opened this jar because I found it was too condensed, but look, they bloom inside and everything. Isn't that pretty? So if you guys have um, African violets, just put them in these jars. You can buy these at Home Goods or Marshalls. I've even seen them at Walmart. And that's it. And then just fill it with water on the bottom enough for it to soak the water up because they like to get the water from the from the bottom not from the top they don't like to get their leaves wet okay. Let me show you. they're super super happy in there i've had so much trouble trying to grow them and and these are about to spike you guys want to see massive leaves look at this crazy huh and it has one spike coming out. I got this at a heavenly garden and I can't wait. And this is a gorgeous, gorgeous Philanopsis. Very cool looking one. Even the leaves are weird looking. And then lastly, oh, you guys want to meet my indoor cat? This is my baby. This is my, my king, Tiago. Tiago, Tiago. Look at, he's, he's such a diva. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? This is Tiago. He's been with me for about eight years and I got him when he was five weeks old. And I, <laughs> look at his ears. Five weeks old when he was just a baby, I was literally like bottle feeding him. And he is such a spoil. He lives indoors. He gets combed every day. He, he I just put him in a contest on Instagram for why should your pet be like, um, the Paul winner or something like that. And he actually was recently, I got an email saying, congratulations, he's on fifth, 13th place, I think it was 13th place worldwide. I was like, wow, Tiago, <laughs> you may win. <laughs> but he came into my life at the right time. But this is when I had to put my little girl, Kayla, a Sheltie, a Shetland Sheepdog, I had to put her down. She was already too old. And he came in right before I had to do that. So. I poured all my love on him, right, Jackito? All right, Tiago, that's enough because I'll be here forever. So then here, <laughs> moving on, here is the fowl that I just bought at Santonomy. I, I think it's Santonomy or Santony or um, Nursery, which I think I paid either 30 or 35. And one of the viewers told me that there's two. Yes, there is two in one. So it was a great, great deal. And I got a beautiful pot to go with it. And it goes very well in this terrace. So anyways, this is where we chill out. 
everything that you see in here, we built ourselves. Even the ceiling we refurbished and Lewis built this. And it's so cool because check this out. It's ergonomic. You can lay in there and it will rock you to sleep. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let me turn this around. That is it for the blooms. That was a very long, long tour. I'm sure you guys, either some of you already checked out or some of you are still there and saying, oh, I want more. <laughs> Either way, I just wanted to share this stuff with you. But before I leave, and I'm gonna make this very quick, before I leave, I'm gonna show you guys some photos that Frank sent me. Let me see if I can put him right here. <laughs> if I go a little further, they'll fit better right there. So anyways, he sent me these images to show me, to share what he's doing. And some of these Cattleyas and Dendrobiums that he has are so beautiful. Thank you, Frank, for sharing your pictures. I really enjoy it a lot. Um, some of you viewers have been sending me some images. You know, I try to look through them. I won't be able to do this all the time because as you can see how long this video is already. But I wanted to share some of my viewers' um, successes. So I have another one. All right, let's get these images out and bring new ones in. <laughs> now these images are from Oscar. Oscar is another viewer of mine and he had sent me a couple of them. He was having horrible lighting and then he sent me some more and, and you guys, if you send me your images and they're a little dark, I'm an expert in photography, it's my background. I can alter them a little bit and clean them so they look clean, that way they don't look so dark. So if they come out a little dark, don't worry. Send them like that. I mean, I would, I would rather a nice photo, clean photo, but if if that's all you have, I can clean it up a little bit. So these are from, uh, from sorry, leaves are falling again. Wind is coming. <laughs> these are from Oscar and he too has a beautiful collection of, of, of flowers. This red cat Leia is like, it reminds me a little bit, a little bit of the, um, the Crawl Smith Heaven's Gate. It has sort of that, that type of shape and look, but it's just gorgeous. Again, thank you guys for sending me your photos. I really enjoy looking at them. I have a lot of fun seeing what other viewers do. And like I said, any chance I get, I will showcase it in my channel so other viewers can see what the viewers are growing. <laughs> so anyways, this weekend, before I leave, this weekend is very, very important. I will be going, guess where? Fairchild Tropical Gardens. You know why? As I turn one year in my channel. <laughs> when I first started the channel, I started by just filming a three day event at Fairchild. Sort of like, I just want to do something fun and put it on YouTube. Little did I know I'd be here a year to later today, celebrating my one year anniversary. And it's all thanks to you guys because channels can happen unless they have viewers. And I really appreciate that you guys have taken a liking to my channel. You like my content, you follow me, you're, you're so, engaged in my channel and my comment section so i really 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 appreciate and love you guys so much all around the world i get messages from everywhere i even get messages from russia from france and you guys write me in your language and i'm here going around asking i have friends from all over the world too so i'm like my russian friends i'm like what did they say here <laughs> i want to say this can you write it for me <laughs> so i do read your stuff and i do go out of my way to make sure even if i don't know the language that i try to understand what you're saying because if you're taking your time to write something i should take the time to at least read it and understand what you're saying so thank you thank you thank you for that so i hope to see you guys this uh on the next episode well i'm not going to see you you're going to see me but I hope you join me on the next episode to the Fairchild Gardens as I celebrate my one year anniversary. I will have a drink or a toast with you guys while I'm there at the park. I know they have a bar. So I will be doing that, some mojitos. Unfortunately, my gang, they're all busy this weekend. So I will be flying solo, but nonetheless, I still will have a great time with you guys. I also wanna say um, there's another show in Key West. I think Ophis is gonna be there. So there's a, a, the Key West Orchid and Plant Sale. It's also this coming weekend, the 12th, uh, 12th and 13th of uh, March. So if you guys are in that area, you can visit. Or if you're in Miami and you're just traveling around, go to both. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful weekend of orchids. So hope to see you guys at the Fairchild Tropical Gardens. I am going to go Sunday. As you know, I work Saturday. But I hope to see you there. And until next time, I am Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always keep it green.